Thank you, Wes. The academic year has its own pace, uh, not like the calendar year. Uh, begin mid-year in the calendar year. And it's appropriate to think of it two ways, like the uh, Roman god Janus, uh, both looking back what's been accomplished and looking forward. We asked the VPs and the deans last week, uh, what were the greatest hits in your units? And uh, if I went through all of them now, uh, we'd be here several hours. So just want to touch on some with apologies for the ones we'll miss. Uh, but I can't tell you how proud and honored I felt even more so for joining Alfred after seeing these greatest hits. We celebrate 100 year, 180 years of transforming students' lives. We've had a very organic, thanks to the leadership of Rick Stevens and our Strategic Planning Coordinating Committee, developing a new strategic plan for our university with three goals. A commitment to enduring educational value, a social justice, and sustainability. Lisa Lance, in her third year directing the Most Arts Festival, a number of us were there this summer. Uh, it was the best one yet, and she's now set a very high hurdle to surpass, but she will do it next year. We've got a new minor in computer science, new BS programs in math, health fitness management, an MSCD program in the College of Professional Studies that's preparing leaders for higher education tomorrow. Our astronomy camp was, uh, we didn't have enough room for everybody that applied by far. And we had a participant from Australia in the mix. Our business students won some prestigious scholarships, participated in a prestigious competition in New York City. Virtually every one of our School of Art and Design faculty were exhibiting somewhere around the world, uh, whether it was in Beijing or Washington, D.C., and just three are listed here. Andrea Gill at the Harvey Meadows Gallery in Aspen, Walter McConnell at the Smithsonian, uh, Linda Sorman at the Harbor Front Center in Toronto. Wayne Higby uh, was elected to the Board of Trustees of the American Crafts Council. Uh, Linda Secor is going to be featured in the PBS special that airs next month uh, for the craft of teaching. Juli Juliana Grays, The Lady Responds, uh, made the anthology of the best poems in the United States last year, or this year. Iquan Wu, in our Inamori School, won a prestigious NSF uh, research award. We just found out uh, a couple days ago, Scott Mischer, and S.K. Sundaram won a prestigious NSF grant for equipment. And uh, they've uh, told us that it's not to quickly heat ramen noodles in their, uh, in their lab. Scott also has a prestigious subcontract in the works for half a million for, from NSF. Our Inamori faculty organized 12 international symposia, over 35 invited lectures nationally and internationally. One of our Inamori professors, Stephen Tidrow, uh, co-organized this Materials Challenge and Alternative Renewable Energy Conference. Alistair Cormack did a marvelous job bringing together the Kiyosara and the Inamori professors just a couple weeks ago here on campus. Also a major uh, session for the 14th Annual International Physics of Non-Crystalline Solids Conference. Uh, Jay Serio deserves credit for continuing to grow our downstate programs, and Rick uh, Stevens for our online leadership and Alan Turn leadership. Art Force Five, we won our first, or we secured our first ever front page coverage, Rochester Democrat and Chronicle. We can't tell you how proud we should all feel of the great work those students have done. The Women's Leadership Academy uh, is now a decade old, has 100 graduates. Friends of Saxon Athletics, they've been rebranded as Saxon Nation. They already have 200 members. Matt Smith uh, notched his 250, 250th win as our soccer coach. Nancy Kohler was named president-elect of the Interscholastic Equestrian Association. 
over 2,800 student hours, service hours, from our students. Kathy was elected to a prestigious board, the International Association of Higher Education Administrators. And Eva Sklipid is very proud of this major library PR award for the Harry Potter exhibit she orchestrated. Business and finance uh, took care of renovating Myers, the chemistry lab, math department offices, Ford Street apartment bathrooms, kitchens, high hill flooring. And university relations, Charlie Edmondson, our former president, finished very strong in the last year of the campaign, which included 7.75 million a SUNY grant with the Inamori School. And the All for Alfred campaign concluded with 65 million in pledges or cash. Of the 8.3 million raised last year, 700,000 for new scholarships and 1.3 million to renovate Reimer and Myers. And Sue Getchis and her team have tripled the number of alumni events over the past five years, and we're going to look to continue that trend going forward. So spend a lot more time, but just uh, we should take immense pride of the contributions of our faculty and staff and students. I'm an economist, and the relevant margin's always forward. The stuff that's in the past you build on, uh, but it, it's in a sense a sunk benefit or a sunk cost, and what you can change is what you can do moving forward. Four draft goals that I've shared with you and want to prepare the prospective in the context of those four goals. First, strategic planning, then our identity, enrollment management, and advancement. We basically got to revise and resubmit on our strategic planning draft from our board and through other sources of input. They said, look, we really praise the transparency, the organic nature through which this plan is developed, but there are key things that are missing, such as where do you want to be five years from now in terms of student enrollment, student quality? Where do you want to be five years from now in terms of downstate programs, online, Allen term? Where do you want to be five years from now in terms of fundraising or advancement? How can you better uh, how can you improve student retention? How can you better balance uh, maintaining uh, fiscal sustainability, but also promoting quality and also promoting nimbleness? And then how do you better define what's special about Alfred, what's special about our identity? So what Rick Stevens uh, has uh, used a wonderful uh, visual that uh, we basically had a strategic plan, if you can picture it as a y-axis, and now we've got an input that we need to take care of the x-axis. So what we're going to be up to over the next five months, working with the executive council and working with the strategic planning coordinating committee membership, is first addressing the x-axis. The input we've gotten from board and other sources on six key dimensions. The names in bold are the individuals who've agreed to co-chair uh, these different dimensions. And the other names are people that are going to be participating on these uh, individual subcommittees. There are six of them total. And what they're charged with is reporting back to the full executive council as well as uh, strategic planning coordinating committee so that we can best take advantage of the fact that what happens in student enrollment also has an impact on student retention and what happens in advancement also has a spillover into other key dimensions we'd like to improve on but the subcommittees will take the first crack and and our commitment is to stay transparent through the process but the next five months basically address the comments that have been raised by our board. And a number of those hopefully by the October 20th, 21st board meeting this fall. Then in January, we're going to re-scramble these groups and take what we've learned 
and then figure out how best we get back to the y-axis and incorporate these various objectives into the three goals of the strategic planning process that have been identified. So that's the game plan. Uh, more detail, there's a lot of heavy lifting to be done, but we're deeply appreciative of all the input and all the hard work that's been done today. Some of these things are going to be easier to tackle than others. Uh, Kathy Woofter, for example, and, uh, and Gerard are already hard at work on uh, what should our goals be for enrollment management because we have to be part of that process. We have to pin that down mm -hmm. early on. The one that's going to be toughest to tackle but arguably the most important is what our identity is, what our brand is. There's a lot special in our valley, but how do we cogently and convincingly convey it? It's going to be real important to do that well. And spend some time, if you will, looking at other universities. A part of the brand is what's your vision and mission. Uh, spend some time looking at other universities' vision and mission statements. We'll argue that most of them, if you strip out the university, you could not tell what university that is. Uh, this is one, for example, it's just called University X. Anybody guess who this is? It's Yale. So it's hard to do well. But we'll, we'll argue if it's this bland, you might as well not do it. Because you're, you're not saying anything special about what makes your university distinct. Um, I've got $100 in my wallet. Anybody want to take me up on a bet, 100 to 1, uh, who can recite our mission statement? <laughs> Anybody want to? Or 10 to 1, get reasonably close. <laughs> no takers? So that hopefully drives home the challenge, how important this is to do well, but how hard it is. Because when you have prestigious places like Yale that have a lot of intellectual horsepower and historical depth, this is still the best they've come up with. How many of you remember the keynote speaker at uh, the dedication of the Gettysburg Cemetery? It wasn't Lincoln. Uh, it was the president of Harvard University, Edward Everett, droned on for over two hours. The speech we remember is the person who was there almost as an afterthought, and compactly uh, school kids still recite uh, the words he gave at Gettysburg. That's our challenge, and it's hard to do, but that's where we, uh, why not be the first university that could pull this off? Here are some examples. A lot of them come from non-university settings. The best one so far that's been suggested is what uh, UT does at their medical school, MD Anderson, with the cancer lined out. Haven't seen a better one. Maybe if you find a better one, let me know. Another one comes from up the road. Have a friend who is the provost at University of Rochester boil down their uh, mission to 10 words to play up that there was a medical school there and their motto ever better, uh, that that was something resonant with that institution. And it took a group of board members, faculty, staff to boil it down. Probably the most memorable ones come from outside universities, but give us some examples maybe of what we could aspire to. For example, Google, to provide access to the world's information in one click. Toys R Us, our vision is to put joy in the kids' hearts, in kids' hearts and a smile on parents' faces. Our new trustee, Mike Carey, said the construction company I admire is DPR. And their motto is simply, we exist to build great things. 
or Ritz-Carlton, we're ladies and gentlemen serving ladies and gentlemen. Just some illustrations, but they give us some things to aim for. Second goal, enrollment management. I uh, want to publicly commend um, Kathy Woofter for being willing to take on this important role. It's arguably 70 to 80% of our top line of our revenue comes from the students we enroll. It's going to be vitally important uh, to improve on this dimension going forward. We had an enrollment management assessment team visit us last month, composed of four individuals, three who uh, have run shops, places like Lafayette College, Drew, Bucknell, Case Western, Johns Hopkins, Union College, a fourth one who's built programs in New York City and graduate programs in upstate New York. The head of that assessment committee is featured last week in Forbes magazine for the turnaround he's helped engineer at Drew University in enrollment management. Their single biggest takeaway for us, they're writing up their report, they've already shared their um, oral recommendations, is you guys not only have low-hanging fruit, but you basically have fruit that's on the ground, ready to be picked up. In terms of not, not being duplicative of your efforts, using just one financial aid form as opposed to two that we currently use. How to be more responsive, how to best allocate staff effort so you're not internally duplicating processes but pointing people to the interactions with prospective students that matter the most. And the single best example they said of uh, fruit on the ground is at your place, faculty, staff, and alums want to help. At our places, it'd be viewed as an unposition. Ask them to help. Because the more you can connect prospective students with faculty, staff, alums, current students, it makes the relationship stickier, and you're much more likely to attract them. Most of you have been on our new website. Uh, Gary Roberts and crew uh, worked incredibly hard over the last uh, seven weeks to reskin. I'd never heard the term reskin, uh, at least not applied to websites. Uh, uh, to redo the landing page, make it more student engaging. But we just want to, if you haven't seen it, uh, one of the two new videos that's featured, uh, and this one's on the micro admissions website that they created. So. of the traffic on the website's prospective students over half reach us with mobile friendly devices. That was the challenge for Gary and crew. We still need to redo the entire website, but at least this moves us a key step forward as we wait to do that this year. Advancement. We have three objectives here. Um, one, can we double unrestricted giving over the next five years? Currently, we raise about 1.5 million a year. 
Second, can we at least double annual total gifts and commitments over the next five years? We've been averaging about five to six million the last several years. And this is what insiders call your book of business. It's not just cash you generate, but commitments you generate. And then, importantly, can we develop a strategic investment fund given some of the near-term challenges in enrollment and student retention, how they play out in our budget, we want to lean against the wind, especially in key areas like enrollment management and advancement. And what we'd like to do is raise five million, at least two million coming from the board, and three million from a bequest gift that Charlie Edmondson was ably shepherding and is coming to fruition. One way, uh, one important step we're taking here is developing a five-year giving society. We're debating whether to call it uh, the Saxon Circle or the Steinheim Circle. Uh, Sue Getchus is taking votes. We have a special committee of the board, chaired by Gene Bernstein, set to go. One of the recommendations they'll make is the name. And this will have two key components. One is a leadership giving group uh, to really help us drive our resource base and that'll start with the thousand dollar minimum annual commitment but that'll involve a five-year commitment as opposed to an annual fund ask. So it's more relational in orientation than transactional. These things are fairly rare at, in universities but the ones that have done it have seen some dramatic increases in their fundraising results. We have uh, different gradations planned in this leadership giving group, and then we'll also develop a group to stress participation at, at less than $1,000 levels, but also uh, recognize individuals who have committed to our university for three to five years at a time. We'll have different categories of the leadership giving group. Uh, as of last week, we had to create an entirely new category of 50000 a year, uh, thanks to Marlon Miller. Uh, this group will recognize that people like Marlon enjoy supporting multiple causes, whether it's athletics or the arts or liberal arts and sciences, so donors have multiple interests and we need to be donor-centric, and ways that we can help promote uh, camaraderie and engagement with that group. We already have nine individuals uh, signed up, even though the society has no name. Three on campus. We want to also publicly acknowledge Rick Stevens and Kathy Woofter. They're two of our three internal folks who've already signed up at the leadership level. Uh, I'm in at, at least, uh, or as much as the 25K annual level. But what we'd like you to do is help me get there. I'll go up to 25K, but matching any new faculty staff gifts. So it needn't be at the leadership level. If you feel you're so inspired, come talk to me afterwards. Uh, we're gonna focus this primarily externally, uh, but we also need to show that we're all in internal. The beauty of these societies where other universities have done them is the best predictor of a major gift is somebody who's given at least $1,000 five years in a row. If you've captured Mindshare with them at that level, a UPenn study says that's the single best predictor. So that's why it's gonna be very important, small groups, people who know us well already and are on board and keep spreading this circle. Last thing, I wanna thank you all for your ongoing commitment and service to our university. Welcome the newbies <coughs> to our group and just share three themes that have come up, even though I'm a newbie too, the three themes that have come up most consistently to date, meetings with alums, faculty, staff, and students. They are impact or illumination, caring community, and strength from diversity. And just illustrate these with some examples. These are several of our alums. I talked late yesterday with a two-time alum of ours, Don McPherson, 
who still remembers fondly living on Main Street, how much lower the rents were than in his current Bay Area location. <laughs> This is a guy who's come up, he's the chief science officer for Enchroma. Uh, he's come up with the lens that uh, corrects for color blindness. Uh, 300 million people around the world suffer from this. Growing rapidly as a company, but what makes him passionate is uh, making a difference in the world. And he said, the faculty in your school, he came to us pretty much by accident. He thought we had an MFA program in art. We'd shut it down. He drove from Ohio to New York. But our art faculty said there's still something in engineering. And so our engineers took him. Uh, two degrees. And uh, he will say, uh, I learned how to solve any problem there is in the world, thanks to what the faculty like uh, uh, Frechette and Pi taught me. And his big passion is, uh, he mentions us every talk he gives out in the media. They were just featured in the Steve Harvey show yesterday. Uh, and brainstorming, how do we get to people like Bill Clinton, who has color blindness, didn't know that, or Matt Lauer. So that this has enormous potential. And he's just developed a technique, too, to do these lenses in contact, in contact form as opposed to frames. Enid Borden. Uh, discovered uh, that she was passionate about social justice while with us. Uh, she's the founder of Meals on Wheels, among other social entrepreneurial ventures. Atiganal Sriram, um, one of our emeritus faculty members said, oh, by the way, you should look up this student. Uh, he's now the chief technology officer at Dow Chemical. Uh, they're merging with DuPont. He'll be the new chief technology officer of the merged even larger firm. Very proud and grateful for what our faculty and staff did for Rich Klein and Ronnie Klein, they met through the brick, as did many romances start on our campus. Um, different fields. Uh, he was incredibly successful in telecommunications, but to this day is proudest of what he developed a patent for. Some nurses noticed with the preemies that the preemies had jaundice and they were near windows the jaundice seemed to go away more quickly. So that inspired him to create a lamp uh, to deal with Billy Rubin. And uh, it still makes him immensely proud that that came out of Alfred. So in terms of impact or illumination, one of the real treasures we have is uh, the commitment. Um, this is a picture from uh, a lunch with the Meredith faculty, Meredith faculty a few months ago collectively about 600 years of service across the 20 individuals. Cannot tell you how often it comes up, more than any other place I've been part of, that at Alfred somebody took an interest in me. Somebody got me through calculus. Somebody inspired me to do drama. Somebody opened up the world of history to me. That kind of magic, and it speaks to what, how we define our brand, is very potent stuff if we can capture it elegantly. Another example, our former dean of students, uh, Fred Gertz, uh, who is also a technical writing instructor like Tim Cox is today, and Tim holds the Gertz visiting professorship. Fred inspired Marlon Miller to give his first million dollars to Alfred. Uh, more recently, uh, John Tabor, because uh, he had such a marvelous impact Fred did on John's and getting John to overcome a speech impediment. And then strength from diversity. A couple weeks ago, I had the pleasure of talking to an 89 alumna of ours. She actually graduated as Chris Beck male, uh, then served as a Navy SEAL with distinction in the Mideast, uh, served on numerous uh, panels to advise our Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, 2013, uh, like Caitlyn Jenner, decided I identify more with being a woman. Has published a book about her experiences, has run for Congress from Maryland, is running again and kept stressing over and over again how supportive 
the Alfred community was when I was going through my own challenges and just what an asset we have in our diversity and if we could figure out a way either curricularly or co-curricularly to bring the strengths of different fields of different backgrounds to bear whether it's a curricular project or an experiential learning project and if we can harness in a small group setting she said you've got some powerful stuff to work here and I'd be willing to come volunteer to help mentor teams either in the classroom or out. Warren Sutton was a member of our class of 61, never graduated. Uh, he was a star basketball player. Uh, he fell in love with uh, the daughter of our then, then treasurer. Uh, the only challenge at the time was uh, he's African American and she was white. And as much as we pride ourselves on our progressive tradition, we struggled with that issue in the 60s. Uh, we, we were in the uh, news, sorry, US News, the New York Times, uh, the New York Herald. He ended up, as did she, leaving school to finish elsewhere. Uh, Gary Ostrauer put me onto the story and encouraged me to reach out. Emails rarely bring tears to my eyes, but the graciousness with which Warren wrote back and what he said about our family and how people stood up for him in our family. He's now in our Athletic Hall of Fame. What his coach did at the time and after. It just uh, a wonderful example. It, we stumble as institutions and individuals toward our ideals, but of what's possible in terms of growth over time. Les Gelber, our board chair, and now would like to ensure that he gets an honorary degree and that we close the loop with Warren. And last few things, last few slides. Think about light, the different aspects of light. Maybe there's a tie-in to the three goals we've identified in the strategic plan. Light illuminates, light has impact through dispelling darkness. For those of you that don't recognize it, this is a picture above Foster Lake. Not really. <laughs> Light also warms. This consistent theme, people cared for me here. While they showed me a new field, or showed I could do something that I didn't think I could. And as powerful as light is, it's also composed of different pigments and how they have to come together to deliver the strength that's light. So our second president, I think, put it best and just leave you with these words. The Oplex. We'll look forward to seeing you at convocation. Uh, we'll look forward as well to the, the welcoming party Friday afternoon at the house. So welcome on board to the newbies and thank you for joining us.